Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Today we're going to give you a breakdown of the most important blockchain events of June. Of course, we have to mention Libra, Facebook's cryptocurrency. But in this episode, we'll only cover the basics, as we're currently working on a dedicated video on that topic. Instead, today we'll focus on Bitcoin's historical run and news on Apple, Ripple, and Cake. We publish three videos every month, two in-depth explorations into the fascinating world of blockchains, and one video where we summarize the most important events of the previous month. If you want to stay up to date with our content, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit that little bell to always get notified when we drop a new video. Also, please be sure to check out our Medium blog at medium.com slash at block essence. See the link in the description for details. Now, let's talk about the sunny month of June. Of course, the biggest news of the month is the official announcement of Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency. Now, we can finally stop speculating and get all the details. Here are the key takeaways. Number one, Libra, although typically referred to as a stablecoin, is technically not a stablecoin, as it is not pegged to a single fiat currency. Still, it will most likely have a stable exchange rate, as it's backed by a basket of assets selected to minimize volatility. Number two, Libra supports smart contracts, which will be written in a brand new language called Move. Three, Libra will not be controlled by Facebook, but an independent Libra association. The association is assembled by a group of node validators. Four, the minimum participation threshold to become a validator is 10 million USD, but can be lowered for nonprofits or NGOs. Five, the original members of the association have been selected from a diverse group of industries from financial companies through services to crypto exchanges. Six, Facebook promises complete separation between social and financial data. Seven, Libra is aiming at 1,000 transactions per second at launch, but the number might go down as more validators are added to the network. Number eight, the blockchain uses a Byzantine fault tolerant consensus mechanism, which draws parallels to EOS's distributed proof of stake. Number nine, the coin is scheduled to launch in mid 2020, and Facebook hopes to have at least 100 members of the Libra Association by then. And number 10, even though the Libra Association is a nonprofit, Facebook is simultaneously launching a regulated, for profit subsidiary, Calibra. Its goal is to develop products and services centered around the Libra token. Of course, the project proves extremely polarizing with multiple DLT enthusiasts questioning its decentralization and calling into question whether Libra is even a blockchain. Many governments have also spoken openly that the project should be stopped until further regulatory framework is put in place. On the other side of the spectrum, we have a group of enthusiasts who see Libra as the first cause of a widespread crypto adoption and are staunch supporters of Facebook's efforts. Honestly, there's so much to unpack here that we'll have to publish a full video breakdown real soon. Stay tuned. Outside of Libra, the biggest news of the month is of course Bitcoin exceeding 10,000 USD. The most popular cryptocurrency actually reached as high as 13,700 USD on Coinbase and then suffered an immediate aggressive drop down to 10,500. As is usually the case with Bitcoin, it's difficult to attribute this historic run to a single factor or event. Some people bring up Facebook's announcement and the subsequent regulatory backlash as possible sources of the run. Another key factor contributing to the run could be the halving event scheduled for May of 2020, which will shrink Bitcoin's mining rewards and constrain the supply of the cryptocurrency. Additionally, the high concentration of positive adoption news we've heard in June could have also contributed to the price hike. One such piece of news is coming from none other than Visa. The financial corporation is entering the B2B cross-border transaction market. According to estimations, the market is worth 125 trillion US dollars and Visa's plan to participate in it is based on their own blockchain solution. This move is clearly aimed at competing with Swift. The Belgian framework for international transfers was established over 40 years ago in 1973 and it shows. We all know the challenges of international transfers with long processing times and unpredictable fees. Visa aims to resolve them by adopting a DLT solution designed by IBM, which requires multiple computers to confirm the transaction before it becomes final. It is worth noting that the solution itself is not decentralized, allowing the company to have full control over the transfers. As Visa makes a strong push into the territory primarily occupied by Ripple, the developer of XRapid has no intention of giving up. Ripple has recently invested $30 million into MoneyGram, 
The Dallas-based company is said to be the second largest money transfer provider in the world. The partnership is particularly important, as MoneyGram has operations in over 200 countries. Ripple's goal, as always, is to make international transfers immediate and cost-free. As a part of the deal, MoneyGram has agreed to use Ripple's XRapid technology and, more importantly, Ripple's XRP cryptocurrency. The partnership has a real potential of improving the settlement of cross-border payments, as MoneyGram will not have to rely on foreign exchange markets to settle transfers and, effectively, will not be required to purchase currencies in advance. Riding on the wave of positive adoption news, we have more rumors coming from a traditionally crypto-skeptical Apple camp. The giant's upcoming iOS 13 operating system is said to have a cryptographic development tool. The solution will allow developers to implement hashing, key generation, and exchange, as well as encryptions on iOS apps. Apple already had a common crypto framework in place in previous iterations, and the only thing the new system brings to the table is the support for Swift, Apple's programming language for mobile devices. Even though the developers and experts don't consider the new framework a game changer, it's definitely good news that Apple is continuously probing the DLT ecosystem and stays active in the community after years of extreme skepticism. What is also interesting, especially in the light of Facebook's Libra announcement, is that Apple has recently recently been increasingly focused on positioning itself in stark opposition to ad-supported tech giants such as Facebook and Google when it comes to issues of privacy. In the final piece of positive adoption news, we have to mention the French retailer Carefor, following in the footsteps of Walmart and designed their own DLT solution to track groceries. The move is aimed at increasing customer trust and allowing them to see specific information on selected products, including harvesting and packaging dates. The initial rollout was focused on 20 products and its success, which actually brought an increase in sales, will lead to the retailer expanding the proposition to over 100 products this year. The technology developed in partnership with IBM made it possible for customers to scan the barcode using their phone and see the information that way. If this doesn't count as an example of mainstream adoption, we don't know what does. On the other side of the adoption and compliance spectrum, we have the SEC suing Kik for allegedly running an unregistered security sale when it launched their ICO in 2017. The Canadian instant messaging app has been marred by controversies for some time now, and the most recent lawsuit might even spell its doom. The company claims to have already spent 5 million US dollars to defend their position against the SEC and had to launch a crowdfunding effort to help cover the cost of the lawsuit. In the filing, SEC claims that Kik failed to register both the offers and sales, which prevented investors from making informed investment decisions. It is also alleged that the ICO was designed to support the failing company, which, according to some reports, has been losing over 30 million USD annually. The 2017 ICO, which was focused on selling Kik's own cryptocurrency called Kin, raised 98 million US dollars falling a few million short of its target of 125 mil. The SEC thinks that the token being sold could be characterized as a security and, for that reason, would have to be registered with the government. If the ruling is decided against Kik, the platform might be forced to return the funds to the buyers, which would be tricky, as Kin has already lost almost 90% of its initial value. So that's it for our summary of June events in the crypto and blockchain space. Stay tuned for our take on Libra Project. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog. The link is in the description below. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. See you in the next one.